When a manufacturer delves back into its history to bring back a name, it inevitably brings a lot of expectation. When it's an iconic name, that expectation and perhaps the pressures are intensified. So when Triumph announced they were bringing back the Speed Twin to our roads, it had a lot to live up to. And that's because when the Speed Twin was launched originally in 1937, it really did change the world of motorcycling as we know it. Up until that point, single cylinder engines had been much more popular for mass produced motorcycles. But when Edward Turner stepped out of his design room in a Triumph factory with a brand new 500cc parallel twin motor, the game had changed. So the Speed Twin was born and it proved to be an instant success, receiving plaudits at the 1937 London Motor Show. The performance of the bike was so strong that in October of the following year, Ivan Wicksteed set a new 500cc Brooklyn's outer circuit lap record at an amazing 118 miles an hour. The track was closed in 1939 when Vickers Aviation took over the circuit in preparation for World War II and the circuit was so badly damaged by bombs that it never reopened so that record stands to this day. So is the Speed Twin more than just the result of Triumph leaving a Thruxton and a Street Twin unattended in the back of the factory? Oh, to find out, I headed over to my friendly neighbourhood Triumph dealer, Jack Lilly in Romford, who very kindly lent me a sparkling new Speed Twin to go out, give it a try and let you know what I thought. <laughs> Thankfully the weather was dry but it was pretty windy so apologies I struggled to capture some decent audio on the bike but to be honest it is quite difficult to capture the true sound on these videos on YouTube anyway so you'll have to use your imagination a little bit. First impressions were great, it's a very comfortable riding position when you sit on this bike having ridden a street twin for a few years. I was expecting this to be relatively similar and it is the seat height is a little bit taller the profile of the seat uh, in terms of width I think is a little bit narrower the foot pegs are much like that of a rear set although not particularly aggressive and despite the fact that it has high bars you do feel just slightly canted forward on this bike a slightly more sporty feel than the street twin and that suits the bike well and really adds to the riding experience Whilst the rain was keeping itself at bay and the roads were dry, I decided to get the hell out of town and find some decent roads where I could really see what the Speed Twin was made of. Once I'd negotiated the crappy traffic and the odd bit of roadworks, it was time to stretch the bike's legs a little bit. This is of course the same 1200cc motor that you find in the Thruxton but it's quite evident that the changes that have been made to this bike in terms of the lightning of components really do seem to make this feel a little bit peppier. This bike is lighter than the Thruxton and the Thruxton R and in fact it is lighter than the Street Twin as well. The bike is fitted with 41mm cartridge forks at the front and the only adjustment on the rear shocks is the preload. Having said that, I found this setup to be pretty good. It is a little bit on the firm side, but that's what you want for a sporty ride and I found that it only became a little unsettled as the road surface deteriorated on some of the small lanes. So out of the factory, I think this setup is pretty damn good. Now I weigh around the 200 pound mark, so a lighter rider may feel it is a little bit too firm, but I think it gave a very balanced ride and the bike felt very planted, very secure. With 96 brake horsepower on tap and more importantly 112 newton meters of torque, 
I never felt that I was left wanting on this bike. It's a hugely flexible engine. It pulls in any gear from very low down in the rev range and it just keeps going and going and it only really starts running out of puff once you get up into the rev range but by that time you would have made it onto Santa's naughty list anyway. Brembo four pot calipers on the twin 305mm discs were excellent. Thankfully, I didn't need to use them in anger, but I did give them a test and they pulled the bike up really quickly. So, a massive improvement over the brakes on the older Street Twin that I had. Uh, having said that, I never really complained about those brakes. If you needed them, they were good enough. I have heard some commentators say that they thought these brakes would be sharper. To be honest, for me, they worked really, really well, and I'd rather have a nice progressive brake than something that you're going to touch with two fingers and it's going to throw you over the handlebars. I guess another thing to comment on while we're looking at this are the mirrors. The bike comes stock with the bar in mirrors, which is a nice touch. Now, whether you like the aesthetics or not, the vision from these teardrop shaped mirrors is really good. You've got really good, clear vision past your shoulders. Uh, I've got no complaints with those whatsoever. And something I noticed, and when we take a closer look at the bike, we can go through it, but Triumph seem to have been looking at and taking a leaf out of the book of people that have been modifying their bikes. So you'll notice that they've treated the brake master cylinder mount slightly differently and having bar end mirrors means that they can put handlebar clamps on there without the risers for the mirror so a much cleaner need to look that's something that I did on my street twin once I switched over to the bar end mirror so it's nice that they're doing this and you can see that in some of the other touches things like the mud guards and other bits and pieces the Monza style fuel cap is a really nice piece of kit, uh, but they've still got that but ugly chrome top nut on the yoke. Uh, for me, that would be the first thing I'd change for the aluminium one from the Thruxton R. And talking of things looking nicer, and this was something that I got asked quite a lot on this channel with regards to modification is, can we fit these twin clocks to a street twin? Now, that was a very hard thing to do, almost impossible, I guess. So it's nice that you've got the twin clocks on here. I like that classic style, and I think it works really well. And judging by the amount of people that asked me about that, I suspect that this is a welcome addition to the bike. Whilst I'm on the subject of the clocks, they are a really beautiful design. Uh, and much like the rest of the bike, the finish on them is exquisite, very clear, very easy to read. But they haven't gone for the TFT option that will be coming through on the Scrambler 1200. And I, for one, applaud Triumph for that. I think the beauty of this bike and these type of bikes is to keep things simple, get back to that visceral feel of riding a naked bike and enjoying those simple pleasures. The Speed Twin does have three rider modes. You have rain, road and sport, all easily selectable on the fly. But because it doesn't have the IMU that the Scrambler 1200XE has, this bike doesn't have the cornering ABS or the cornering traction control. But as you can see on the twisties, it's an absolute blast to ride. Time's running on a little bit now, so I'll head to somewhere where you can have a little bit of a closer look around the bike, and then I'll give you my quick summary. 
it's a very handsome machine there's no denying that particularly in this silver ice storm gray colorway which i really like it's also available in Corosi red and both of those are a 300 pound premium over the stock jet black bike which comes in at 10,500 on the road as we've come to expect from Modern Triumphs, the fit, finish and detailing is absolutely superb. The Monza fuel cap is a nice touch, you've still got the locking element to that, but it's a really nice way of setting off that tank. The aluminium mud guards are straight out of the custom playbook, and those Brembo 4-pot calipers really do a great job at hauling this bike to a stop. The headlight brackets are carried over from the Thruxton, but as I say, the quality of the components and the way they're put together really do make this bike stand out, particularly at that price point. I'm actually a fan of this paint job, and I'd be quite happy to ride this bike around with this, although having said that, I have got an 8-ball custom-painted tank, which I guess would switch right over. When looking for negatives, you really do have to nitpick, and for me, really, it's only a couple of aesthetic issues that I've got problems with. Firstly is that side panel and throttle body cover. Now this is a modern retro bike and for me, this is just a little bit too Buck Rogers. That's just a personal opinion. Some people might like it. I'm not a fan of the black section on the exhaust. Either make the exhaust entirely black or entirely silver. But the one big standout part for me was this. What's this exposed frame rail all about? I couldn't get it, don't know. It was a little bit more sheltered here, so I tried to capture that exhaust sound for you. Right, I think I've given you about as much information as I can for this video. It's time to sum it up. Do I like this bike? Yes, I do. I'm going to inevitably make comparisons to the Street Twin and to the Thruxton. Compared to the Street Twin, obviously much more powerful, much quicker, stops better. Aesthetically, it's very similar, but it just does look a little bit more muscular and a little bit more purposeful. When you compare it to the Thruxton, well, a slightly different style of bike, obviously. Uh, being lighter, I think this is actually a quicker bike than the Thruxton, but if you want that classic cafe racer look, then the Thruxton's the one to go for. Very quickly, one thing I didn't touch on earlier on the video are the tyres. This bike comes with a set of the Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa tyres, which you'll find on the Thruxton R. Absolutely brilliant tyres on the tarmac and a massive improvement over the Phantoms that the Street Twin had. I really didn't like those. I didn't have any confidence in them in damp conditions at all. And it appears that I wasn't the only one judging by the feedback I've read on the forum. So I'm glad they went with something more purposeful. And those tires in the 120 70 17 on the front and 160 60 17 on the rear are perfect for this bike. They look the part and they really do stick like the proverbial to a blanket. So when it comes to the crunch if you're a street twin owner is it worth the upgrade to this bike well if you're one of the street twin owners that bought the bike and then have been disappointed with the performance and i see quite a lot of that on the forums online then most definitely however if you enjoy the simplicity and the sheer pleasure you get from riding your street twin then stick with what you've got unless you really want that performance upgrade spend the extra money on making your bike personal to you but there's no disputing that the Speed Twin is a beautiful bike to ride, it's a beautiful bike to look at, and it would be a beautiful bike to own. The Scrambler 1200s have been gaining a lot of headlines, and there are people uh, fainting and wooing over those bikes. For me, personally, being completely honest, if I'm going to drop five figures on a Triumph Modern Retro, this bike is the one that would be sitting in my garage. There's probably loads of stuff I've missed, so if you've got any specific questions, ask them in the comments section down below. Hopefully I can get a little bit more time on the bike uh, relatively soon. So again, if there's anything you want me to incorporate into another follow-up video, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and get that sorted out. Other than that, I hope you found the video useful. I'm sorry I didn't get any ride-by shots of it, but I was filming this on my own, and I only had the GoPro mounted on my chest. So if I get an opportunity to uh, ride this again relatively soon, if the weather's kind, 
I'll try and get a few more action shots for you. So until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.